All right, good, good afternoon. Um, apologies on the technical uh, difficulties there, those of you uh, joining us. Uh, we actually uh, introduced ourselves and started, uh, started rolling and everything, and then we realized that the, the YouTube feed was uh, not working as it should today. So thanks for those of you uh, sticking it out uh, to have your uh, questions answered. Uh, today. We are excited to have you joining us uh, for today's webinar and really the, the webinar is all about you and what questions uh, that you have uh, for us uh, to tell you. Um, and so, so start asking those questions uh, within the YouTube uh, chat and I'll be referencing those and that'll really guide our conversation uh, today. So start um, asking uh, those questions in there. And uh, to let you know who's on the phone here, uh, first of all, my name's Chad Eikoff. I serve as Director of Admissions uh, here at Northern Arizona University and absolutely love working with families and students as they navigate that process uh, to uh, find NAU to be, to be their home and, and that transition piece uh, that we're certainly in this summer. And we're gonna help talk through uh, some of those steps and to introduce you to my colleagues uh, that are with me today. I'm going to have uh, Annika introduce herself. Great. Thanks, Chad. My name is Annika Olson, and I serve as the Vice President of Enrollment Management here at Northern Arizona University. And, and like Chad, um, I absolutely adore working with um, students and their families um, throughout the entire enrollment process. I have a recent NAU graduate. She graduated a year ago. It's hard to believe it's already been a year and, and she launched straight into her master's program. And then I have two other high school students. So a rising senior. Um, so getting, getting ready for that final year that all of you just um, helped complete with your student and then a rising sophomore as well. Um, Shannon? Hello, everybody. I'm Shannon Clark. I'm an assistant dean in the office of the dean of students, and I'm also the director of parent and family services. Um, I really love working with families. I do lots of things in my job, but really enjoy working with families, um, especially as you make this big transition this summer, uh, the big launch to the start of classes in the fall. So we're really excited to take your questions today. And um, I recommend you give Annika the really, really hard questions. Be sure when you type it into the chat, you say, this is for Annika. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and one thing I do wanna give a plug for, and I'll probably plug it a couple times, is we're launching a new online video series called Forecast from Flagstaff. And you may have seen a teaser, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's on our NAU social uh, YouTube page, the, the page you're watching this on. Um, but our first official episode is this evening, actually, um, five o'clock. It'll be um, on YouTube um, as well as Facebook, and those are recorded. So if you're not there to watch it live, uh, you'll be able to go back and reference those uh, later. But our plan then is uh, every two weeks, um, every other Wednesday uh, throughout the summer, we're going to be having an episode of uh, forecast from Flagstaff, and that is where we're going to be giving you updates um, about, you know, different things on campus as we prepare for your student uh, to arrive this fall and uh, the, the plans that are coming into place uh, to make that as safe as possible. Um, and to, I guess, kick us off maybe to talk about some of that planning process and what that looks like. Um, Annika, if you could uh, talk about what planning for fall looks like. Sure. Well, we are um, knee deep in planning for the safe execution um, in, in our, our new normal here on campus as we welcome students back to campus in, uh, this fall in August. Um, from looking at density in our dining facilities and our, our, our student gathering spaces to what do our classrooms set up and, and some different technologies being added and expanded upon there as well. So many, many things going on on campus to ensure safety for students, our faculty and staff as well. Throughout the month of July, um, we'll be spinning up and more staff will be uh, rotating in all the while practicing social distancing. And, and some of that means um, you know, a rotation schedule for some of our team members or the use of conference room spaces in different ways so we can 
um, all stay safe. And that that definitely um, go, uh, trickles into the student experience too. We know how important a vibrant campus experience is for students. They've told us that a lot in the last number of months. Um, and, and we aim to deliver, although it will look different than in years past. Um, so the way our clubs and organizations um, engage with students and, and, and build their memberships, um, as well as their classroom experience. Um, so lots of planning happening to make sure um, our students stay safe um, from testing protocols to daily check-ins um, in an app. Um, lots of things, um, you know, just we're, we're dotting the I's and crossing the team. So T's on, on so many of those plans and the forecast from Flagstaff, um, every other week series will we'll deep dive in into some of those issues very specifically in the upcoming weeks. All right, I see a few questions coming in. Just a reminder and a nudge that this is really going to be driven by you all. So make sure you're um, asking those questions uh, within the YouTube uh, video comments and uh, we will uh, be answering uh, those as they're coming in. Um, Annika, a question that maybe you can answer, uh, when are fees, um, when, when are fees due, um, housing, food, etc.? Sure. Um, and so we are, um, like so many other campuses across the country, looking at our fall schedule and looking to be complete by the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, since we're in a cooler climate um, than much of the rest of the state of Arizona, um, we, we know that cold and flu season um, arrives um, during around that time. So wanna make sure that our students are home and safe by that holiday time. And so with that, we're backing up some of those things. So when our financial aid will disperse and, and some of those due dates. Um, the first due date um, is usually and will remain um, early August. Um, so tuition, room, board fees, um, you'll be able to see all of those posted on your student account. And if you haven't asked your student to grant you access to that, they are able to do that in their Louie account by logging in and making you as their parent or guardian an authorized user. Um, so I would definitely recommend taking that step and, and getting familiar with that system. So you'll see um, as their enrollment is complete and as those fees are put out there and charges, you'll be able to see those. You'll also be able to see their financial aid that would offset some of those um, payments. And so you'll be able to see all of that. So make sure they make you an authorized user. So Annika, you mentioned uh, possibly starting earlier. When would a decision be uh, made or when would families learn of uh, if we are doing an earlier start date? Great question. So um, we received um, the, the first step of, of, of backing up our semester happened last week. And the final step will happen tomorrow with the Arizona Board of Regents um, voting that we can alter our academic calendar. Um, so in the next 24 hours, I suspect there'll be a far and wide announcement to that effect of, of the start date and end dates, et cetera. Great, thank you. Uh, Shannon, I want you, uh, can you tell us about Parent Weekend? Yes, Chad, you know, I love to talk about family weekends. So if I go on and on too long, just give me the hook and tell me to move along. Um, so family weekend this year is going to be October 2nd through 4th, first weekend in October. And over my years at NAU, family weekend kind of floats around. But the first weekend in October is my absolute favorite time for family weekend. Um, the weather is gorgeous. It will be fall. Um, for those of you who live in the desert, um, you'll be able to wear your sweaters and your boots, a little beanie. So it's a beautiful time in Flagstaff. Um, right now, we have simply published the date. We haven't published any events yet because um, as Annika mentioned, as an institution, we're still working on fine tuning our guidelines um, in terms of what, what a family weekend is gonna look like um, in October. 
So we want to be sure that we plan engaging activities that are also safe and appropriate in this new environment. So stay tuned um, that you'll be able to see information on our website as soon as we get dialed, since we get that dialed in. And it's really easy to find at nau.edu backslash family weekend. Thanks, Shannon. Um, Annika, a question for you. Uh, how do you plan to accomplish social distancing in the honors dorm? Or we can speak to just dorms and residence halls in general. Sure, similar to how we have been um, isolating um, with our family units, what, and, and sometimes that is you know, a handful of roommates, or sometimes that's our, our, our biological family that looks different for everyone. Similarly, we'll be treating um, areas of the hall and in the honors hall specifically with the suite style and some singles available. Um, those suites will be treated as family units. Um, and then with the expectation that face cover when social distancing is not able to be accomplished, that face coverings, coverings will be worn um, by our students, faculty, and staff. Um, and so if we're in a large enough venue, um, you know, we, we have a handful of large lecture halls on campus, but by design, we haven't, um, we don't have massive lecture halls. Um, so we're, we're working to make different types of lecture halls from conference room space and in some um, other facilities on campus that traditionally haven't been classrooms. And so when we're able to social distance, um, you know, that mask covering, um, may not be required, um, but and in the residence hall, in your family unit, in your suite or apartment, um, that, so that's how we're viewing that. Um, recently, our partners in residence life and housing um, asked students who have applied for housing to update some preferences based on um, COVID and their comfort levels. And they are asking for responses by this Friday, June 5th. Um, so if your student hasn't um, answered those few short questions, I would encourage them to log into the housing portal and, and uh, answer those. They were sent an email to do so, um, but we know students are busy. Um, and so maybe a little nudge might be good if they haven't yet. Great. Um, question about uh, their daughter had their initial Zoom meeting with their orientation leader, and will there be more time of them um, and something for students to highlight information for move-in day, start of classes, um, et cetera? Um, I would say that we're going to continue to try to offer opportunities for students to connect with other students um, throughout, throughout the summer um, in different ways. We've um, had a variety of uh, different things this spring where we've invited students to uh, have the opportunity to meet academic deans, have the opportunity to meet um, our current students. Uh, we do have uh, some of our orientation leaders and student ambassadors uh, that take over Instagram a couple times a week and answer questions there, uh, sometimes in a live format, and then also um, where you can write in anonymous questions as well too. Uh, so those are some ways I would say to connect uh, with our students uh, throughout the summer. Um, and to just talk, because this did kind of mention orientation or a piece of the orientation part that, um, so I can kind of talk through orientation because that's been a common question we've been getting um, at these uh, parent webinars and what that looks like. Uh, so with transitioning to uh, virtual orientation, uh, we've got five kind of one week blocks of time. Uh, we kicked off last week and go through the month of June now. Uh, if your student has not yet registered for orientation, uh, they can do so at nau.edu slash orientation. Um, and they should sign up for the week that works the best for them. Um, they are not gonna be uh, doing orientation activities for that full entire uh, week. Uh, they're just gonna be completing some online modules uh, which typically, uh, and we ask for them to do that during that week span, um, typically takes maybe an hour, maybe two hours uh, for the students to complete uh, those online modules. Um, now, uh, in addition to that, we realized that an important part um, of, um, an important part of the orientation experience when we're in person is being able to meet current students 
as well as some other incoming students as well. So we, as the, the parent had mentioned in that question, uh, we do have uh, Zoom sessions uh, where the students, um, the orientation leader is inviting the students that they're paired up with uh, for that week to be able to meet together and, and talk um, a little bit. So uh, trying to simulate that because we realize that's uh, such an important part. Um, I do know that there is also kind of a, a question that came in uh, around advising uh, too. And advising uh, doesn't necessarily go exactly hand in hand with orientation. Uh, both are virtual experiences. So you'll have the virtual, uh, the student will have the virtual orientation experience. They'll also have a virtual um, advising experience, which may or may not fall in the week that they have orientation. Um, the Gateway Student Success Center, which oversees our uh, first year advising, uh, does, um, we'll, we'll be scheduling that appointment with your student and they will send the appointment time to their NAU email address. Uh, so really important that your student starts checking their NAU email address um, and not, not just for the advising purposes, but a lot of offices on campus will utilize NAU email addresses um, because that is the official uh, communication um, for students. Well, I'm looking back through what questions have come in. It looks like we're starting to get a, a flurry of questions here. Uh, Shannon, do you want to tell us about communication that goes to parents uh, through the backpack? Yes. Uh, so the backpack newsletter is our email newsletter that we publish every other week during the academic year. So we're on a little bit of a slowed down schedule for the summer. I'll probably publish one uh, maybe in July or so, but watch for the bi-weekly editions um, once classes start in the fall. Anyone can subscribe to the backpack. You just need to go to our website, nau.edu backslash backpack and provide your uh, email address. Or if you're like my house, my husband and I have separate email addresses, feel free to um, provide as many emails as you wish. We're happy to get the backpack out to you. But this is a way that you can stay current on what's happening at the university, um, fun things that are coming up. We often publish points of pride, cool things that students are and faculty are doing. And also it's a great way to include some reminders, some things that you want, may want to um, highlight or underscore or remind or bring to your students' attention <laughs> things like deadlines that, that, that are important to them. So we hope that you'll subscribe. We also have some beautiful images of campus that we always try to include in each edition. And we have such amazing seasons in Flagstaff that you'll really be able to follow that through our backpack newsletter. Maybe round out the, the advising question a little bit more as I look back at how that question was asked. Um, if your student has specific questions about uh, classes that they were scheduled for or are on their schedule um, during that virtual advising appointment, uh, they'll have the opportunity to have that conversation with their advisor. Um, so the way it works here, and if your student has not yet completed priority enrollment, I would encourage them to do so. Um, NAU.edu slash priority enrollment and that helps our Gateway uh, Student Success Center advisors build um, the initial schedule uh, for your students. And then when they're in that virtual advising appointment is when your student can ask any questions that they may have um, about that schedule and make any changes at that point. But priority enrollment is going to kind of uh, drive that initial uh, schedule. Um, and in priority enrollment, your student's going to uh, confirm what academic program they plan to study. So maybe they applied as one thing and have changed their mind and, and now want to study something different, they would uh, share that within priority enrollment. Um, I also see uh, a question about AP scores uh, as well. Uh, priority enrollment is one of those places that a student can list that they have uh, a certain AP uh, test score. Um, they can also share that information in that advising appointment uh, with the advisor um, as well, but priority enrollment is a, a great spot to uh, put that information in and uh, share that with students or share that with your advisor. Um, all right, uh, Annika, um, how long after final transcripts are received will we receive updated academic scholarship notifications if there's a change in scholarship? Right. Well, if you, if you think your student um, is eligible for a different scholarship based on their most recent and final high school transcript, 
um, you'll want to notify us to, to, to take, we don't automatically do that. We work um, individually with students to do that reevaluation. Um, so if you've sent us the final high school transcript, and I know if, I, if there are parents joining us um, outside of Arizona, they're still, they're still in session in many states, California being one of those many districts still in school for another week or two. Um, but certainly if you're an Arizona uh, person, you're likely complete at this point. So requesting that final high school transcript and you'll see that your student in that Louie account will see um, that is a completed item. And so once that's complete, um, student um, can reach out to us um, or um, could also schedule individually with a team member from admissions at admissions.appointment at nau.edu. Just say, hey, I'd like to schedule a, a, a meeting with someone and we can kind of eyeball it um, based on that final high school transcript as well and then request the formal uh, reevaluation of that. Yep. And with those admissions uh, appointments, we can either do that over Zoom and have some face-to-face -face interaction or just simply schedule a phone call uh, to talk through as well. Annika, uh, when will we receive move-in dates? Great. Well, I, in two, our, we start forecast from Flagstaff today, and in two weeks on the 17th, we are breaking down all things residence life. Um, so move-in dates will be available, um, I would suspect, that week. And um, the way move-in dates work is we do assign appointment times for students to move in. And keeping those is, is important now more than ever. Um, so, so making sure you, you keep that, that time slot. But it'll likely be um, the, the handful of days leading up to the start of school um, and, and will, will likely involve a weekend, some weekend times as well. We would, um, the, so, so with, with traffic, we got to be mindful of traffic patterns on campus so, and density. Um, so, so there's a lot of little details and logistics to work out there. Um, but on that June 17th at 5 p.m., that, that live cast event um, is all, everything move in, everything residence life. Um, so our, we'll be joined from a handful of team members fr from housing and residence life to break down all those questions. I would suspect you'll get move in dates in the next 10 days or so. Shannon, can you uh, talk a little bit about Flagstaff weather and what what students, uh, how they can prepare for that? Yes. Flagstaff weather is awesome. Perfect. Um, perfect. Yes, perfect. <laughs> we usually don't have, most homes don't have air conditioning. And I think it's funny. There's my fan running in my home office. Um, it really is really beautiful right now. Um, but in about October, it's going to start getting cooler. Um, so that students probably don't need heavy winter gear until the later part of October. So when you're helping your student pack up and it's seeming like a lot, maybe you leave a box or a bin of winter clothing at home until a little bit later in the fall. Um, but definitely, um, starts to get wintry around the holidays and then spring semester can be can be wintry. So your student will need a warm coat. They'll need a, something to put on their head. They will need some waterproof shoes. But this is when I always like to put a plug in for our local economy here in Flagstaff. So you don't need to buy everything at home and pack it up. We have some terrific um, stores here in Flagstaff. We have a number of excellent sporting goods stores uh, where you can stock up on your winter gear. Also, Target, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Target and Walmart have great winter boots and coats, so you can save a few bucks there also. Thanks, Shannon. Um, question about uh, possibly starting early and all of that. Um, I think since you typed the question, yeah, I know you mentioned it came in late. I think we, we kind of recap that, that within the next couple of days we should have um, an answer about a potential earlier start. Um, and then earlier end to the um, semester. And we'll obviously communicate that out 
um, as soon as uh, something like that is uh, official. Send this one to you, Annika. Uh, how many days prior to the first day of instruction do you recommend out-of-state students arrive on campus? Great question. Um, I would recommend probably four to five days, probably four days before the start of instruction to arrive on campus. But again, your student will be assigned one of those move-in times. So what we find um, a lot of out-of-state students do um, and certainly if booking flights is a concern and you don't wanna wait until you receive that exact move in time, um, I, you could book flights and then um, explore Flagstaff as a, as a family. And then when you're assigned that move in time, it's go time, you move in, right? So a lot of, a lot of families kind of plan some vacation or downtime around move in as well. Um, so there's one suggestion for you um, is as well, but you know it is important for students to um, you know once they're moved in to um, start connecting with uh, their new lumberjack family. Um, and this was hard for me too. You know, I I moved um, helped move my daughter in um, to Taylor Hall up on North Campus. I point that way because it's right over there, mm -hmm. um, and it was like we were done moving in and I didn't really want to go. And, and, and I was 10 minutes away, right? Like that's a hard time, but, but it was important for her to get connected with others on campus and start experiencing life um, as a college student. Um, and so, whereas I wouldn't say you need to say goodbye as soon as you move in, just, just be mindful of that too. And your student may need some additional transition time. Um, as well. Um, so, so I don't, Shannon, I don't know if you have anything to add um, with move in and that type of thing. I, I guess I would highlight um, your approach, which takes a lot of flexibility. Um, but you may kind of have an idea of how your student will react at, at move in. I know that I wasn't terribly surprised uh, with my two kids, how they, how different they were. Um, our son was very, very ready for us just to get on out of there and let him get going. Um, whereas our daughter was a little more interested in having us stay a little bit more while she, while she got accustomed to the environment. So think ahead and then uh, uh, stay flexible. Uh, also, I wanted to point out that we are in the process now of planning lots of events um, right at move-in and we're renaming it the Lumberjack Experience. So we will have a number of activities for students before classes even begin and right as classes begin. So they'll be busy. Uh, we want them to be engaging with other students, making new friends, um, really starting to make this their home right away. And our goal is to keep them keep them busy and keep them scheduled. So keep that in mind also as you make your plans, um, thinking about coming to campus. The second part of their question is around um, if parents are, will have the ability to tour campus at all when they get here. Um, and I'll share a few different resources that we have out there uh, currently that you could utilize when you get to campus in the fall or if you find yourself in Flagstaff uh, this summer. Um, and all of these resources are on uh, nau.edu slash virtual. And you have the opportunity to do a virtual tour um, there. But, it, and also, I guess you can see um, our campus visit presentations as well, too. So if you want to see uh, one of those presentations either again or for the first time, uh, we're offering those twice a day um, over Zoom. Um, but the, the resources that are available for you if you do end up in person in Flagstaff are we have a self-guided tour uh, that you can print or pull up on your phone um, there on that web page. Um, and also we have a podcast that's recorded there that has uh, a, one of our people on campus talking about uh, each of those stops in that self-guided tour. So those are a couple of uh, resources uh, to campus and be able to uh, see campus. All right, for Annika, um, 
Am I understanding correctly that students will return home at Thanksgiving and remain online from home until spring semester starts? Great question and thank you for clarifying. They should be done with their entire semester, including final exams by Thanksgiving. So there will, um, unless they choose to take um, a winter term course, we do have quite a few students who like to concentrate just on one class in a, in a shorter term format. Um, that's always been offered in the online environment over the winter holiday. And so um, if your student chooses to, to, to engage there, they would engage in online instruction, but their fall term will be complete um, by that Thanksgiving holiday. Some questions about uh, being reevaluated for scholarships and that type of thing. I would uh, suggest just reaching out to admissions now. Um, if you've got uh, transcripts, we could look at what you have, even if the finals um, haven't come in yet, um, and look at some unofficial transcripts there. Um, so I would suggest either, um, as Annika mentioned earlier, that admissions.appointment at nau.edu to set up an appointment to speak to someone in admissions, um, or feel free to uh, call our uh, general admissions uh, phone number um, as well. And uh, we could talk to you um, at that time too, which is 928-523-5511. Uh, so again, 928-523-5511. Uh, um, and you could uh, talk through that if you think your student uh, may be eligible for a scholarship now. Question about, is the honors uh, dorm Wi-Fi reliable or do you recommend bringing an ethernet cable just in case? I think everywhere on campus, we've got uh, pretty reliable uh, Wi-Fi, um, especially, you know, resident halls and that. And um, uh, I think all of our buildings have seen lots of great upgrades um, and we continue to do so uh, this summer as well to um, upgrading, upgrading infrastructure on campus. Uh, specific to the Honors College building that is a very new building too. So um, our newest residence hall. Our, our newest building. So yeah, lots of <laughs> uh, lots of bells and whistles, I'm sure. So but that being said, in all the other residence halls um, and other places on campus uh, should have reliable Wi-Fi uh, for you this fall as well. Um, but if you want to be hardwired in for the, the internet, um, certainly feel feel free to bring a Ethernet cable um, as well. Chad, I think it's always funny to hear students talk about Wi-Fi going all the way to Target, which is right on the edge of campus. So yes, there's good Wi-Fi coverage around campus and in the whole neighborhood around NAU. Maybe this is a, a question you can answer here, Shannon, uh, or give your thoughts. Uh, another, another technology question, we're on the Wi-Fi stuff, now a, a printer question. Uh, do you recommend buying a printer for the dorm room uh, or are assignments papers sent in electronic form? If my daughter needs to print something, would she be able to print it in a lab somewhere on campus? Yeah, I guess I'm hearing more and more students say that they really don't need to bring a printer to campus. Um, uh, more faculty are taking online submissions for papers. Um, and then we do have a number of outlets around campus where students can get free printing. Um, and of course the library also offers printing. So, so a, a printer probably isn't necessary, although it would certainly be acceptable if your student wants to bring a, a printer. That would be um, one thing I would coordinate once a roommate Mm -hmm. Roommates are solidified. A number of, of students have already selected their roommate and been chatting with them um, on social media or through the housing uh, housing portal. They have the ability to, to, to do that. If, you're, if your student doesn't have a roommate yet, there's nothing wrong. Um, it just that, that hasn't, it's all kind of based on what students prefer and if they've identified someone to, to, to match with. Um, so that's a great conversation to have on some of those common items that, um, you know, maybe someone brings the, the printer and someone brings the coffee pot, um, that kind of thing. Um, so some great conversation that can happen uh, throughout the month of July there as well. 
My daughter signed a national letter of intent to the cross country and track and field teams. Will budget cuts affect her scholarship? Um, will there be an NCAA cross country season? Um, so I, taking Shannon's advice for, for other webinars we've done to not talk about things that we aren't experts in and don't know all the ins and outs answers to. So I would um, suggest touching base with the, the coach and, and the athletic department to talk through that. And I'm sure the NCAA is probably uh, doing things uh, right now as well too. Um, anything to add to that, Annika? Or no, you know, um, VP Mike Marlowe, who oversees athletics, um, ha has been on between Big Sky and NCAA, ha has, has been on a number of things to make sure our athletes can return safely. And, and, and many of them will start returning this month. Um, and some of them have stayed with us throughout um, the spring, um, anticipating um, their, their fall season. The benefits of, of, of cross country and track and field, a little different than an enclosed space like volleyball or basketball, right? Um, so, so some different, I think there's some different guidelines emerging there, but as Chad said, um, that, that's about all I know on that. Um, but between Mike Marlowe and, and the coach that I'm sure your student um, has, has already heard from, or if they haven't, um, well, likely soon, I, I think some proactive um, outreach there is, is completely appropriate. I will Brand. say any of the of the scholarships um, that are non-athletic um, certainly are not affected. Um, so that that may help answer other questions too. Yep. Um, for Annika, when does spring semester start? Oh, I don't have that at the uh, it, it starts mid to late January is, is the start time and we're not anticipating any um, changes there um, today. But as we've all experienced in the last number of months, we've learned how to be nimble and flexible in, in, in ways that we likely hadn't anticipated at the start of 2020. Um, so as of now, our start date remains um, mid to late January. Um, Shannon, I think, is madly trying to look it up for me right there. <laughs> I saw that happening. Um, so we don't expect any changes there as of today. And also for Annika, um, when is the tuition payment deadline? I think the tuition payment deadline is seven days after classes begin. Um, again, since we're looking at shifting that that date, um, again, that we should have solidified in the next 24 hours or so, all of those dates um, will be um, updated. Um, again, it's usually the, um, at the beginning of August, and I would expect that to be the same even with the shift. So I've got it, Chad. All right. We're a little bit earlier um, in January than we sometimes are. Uh, it's the 11th of January oh. is the scheduled date. So that's just, it depends on how um, the calendar falls, of course, and we have the Martin Luther King holiday observed in January. So sometimes that's a factor, but 1-11-21. Great, thank you. And I think that Thanks, takes care Shannon. of a couple other questions that popped into uh, we've got a parent asking if we can explain uh, the email we received around reducing uh, density in the in the dorms. Uh, does that mean that uh, they will not have a roommate? And I, I can talk a little bit more to that. So really, uh, it's we want students to go in their housing portal and essentially fill out a survey. Um, we're in a kind of a data collection uh, phase of that and trying to uh, get a sense of interest in a couple of options and. Uh, it's really important to note that expressing interest in an option does not guarantee uh, that you, your student actually will get that option. We just want to see uh, what interest is out there for them. And the three uh, options that your student's going to be asked to uh, express if they're interested in, uh, the first one is a double room as a single buyout. So to pay um, an additional amount to uh, be living in a, a double room uh, by themselves. And I am told that if that if a student does end up with that option, that both sets of furniture are going to remain uh, in the, the residence hall room. Uh, 
And then the second option that is, the student's gonna express interest in potentially is the suite style housing. So we've got a couple of properties on campus that have suite style um, where there's uh, two different rooms and then a shared uh, bathroom. So expressing interest in that. And then the third one is gonna be if they um, are interested in potentially a different roommate, uh, what they're currently aligned with and potentially someone outside of the residential college uh, model. Um, but again, all three of those options, your student expressing interest does not guarantee that they're gonna get that option. So just uh, the, the data collection phase, um, and I don't know, Annika, do you, do you have a date for when they're hoping to get the survey responses by for that? Oh, you're muted. They're trying to collect survey responses by this Friday. And then um, over the next um, couple weeks, um, if um, students have requested something different, make some of those shifts, students will be contacted by phone directly to clarify or prior to anything changing. So I did get that clarification um, because we don't want to just, you know, if students have, have picked a room and a roommate and they don't want to change, then, then more likely than not, they're not going to be changed. Um, and so as Chad mentioned, we're data collecting and there's a number of models that we're looking at. Interestingly enough, a majority of our first year um, students based on the initial responses received already did, wanted to keep a roommate and didn't want to opt for for a single or something different. Um, so, I, so I think that's just interesting. There are a number of students that really want that that roommate experience. Steve, I'll throw this your way, uh, Shannon. Um, what items can a student have in their residence hall for cooking? Uh, fridge, microwave, rice cooker. Are there kitchens in the halls? Mm, okay, so um, no, nothing that has a, a flame. Uh, that that's kind of a good baseline. So, no candles, no gas burners, no fire pits. Um, let's see what's okay. Coffee makers are okay. Um, an iron heats up and is fine. Um, what else am I forgetting? Um, the, the refrigerator comes, refrigerator freezer comes in, uh, the halls and it's a good size, fits ice, lots of ice cream <laughs> that I am aware of. Um, rice cooking, okay. Yep. And on the Residence Life website, there's a list of what to bring and what maybe to leave at home. Um, and again, we'll be breaking that down on a forecast from Flagstaff as well. Um, of the items to bring, again, I'd recommend kind of um, having some um, planning chats with roommates to determine, oh, look, we both brought a coffee pot and we're lacking a iron. I don't know many college students that iron regularly, but you never know. Got a clarification on there. George Foreman Grill is the question. I don't, I, I think George Foreman Grills are a no-no, but let me take a look real quick on the website and I'll let you know. And maybe about the community kitchens, I am guessing that there's going to be some conversation about that for safety, um, health and safety reasons about whether the community kitchens will be open and what the guidelines for those will be. So I don't have those off of the top of my head, but I am certain that our colleagues in housing and residential life are really taking those into careful consideration um, for safety. Ooh, here's a good question. Um, which is the most popular dining plan torn between the 10 and 14 meal plan? Um, and I can just talk kind of broadly to the dining plans uh, for a little bit here. So kind of the, the main plans you'd be choosing, um, the student chooses between a, a 10 meal a week plan, 14 meal a week plan, or a 19 meal a week plan. Um, and with those, uh, those, those meal swipes can be utilized 
um, either in the dining hall, so the all you care to eat facilities, we've got a couple of them on campus, uh, but then also at our retail facilities um, on campus as well. And the, the easy example that I always use, um, and, and the, at those retail spots, we use what's called transfer specials. And for example, with Subway, uh, you could get a sandwich, a drink, and a side, and that would be one of your meal swipes um, of that 10, the 14, or the 19. Um, additionally, each of the meal plans comes with a, a different amount of dining dollars, and dining dollars are essentially a declining balance uh, debit, uh, that can also be used at retail facilities um, on campus. And they have, have a different amount depending upon the number of meals. Uh, so the 10 meal a week plan is going to come with more dining dollars, whereas the 19 meal a week plan is going to have fewer dining dollars um, as a part of the plan. And um, I always struggle when students are like, what's the, the right plan to get? Because it's, it really is a personal preference thing and uh, goes to what, what your students' uh, e eating habits are. Um, but one thing I, I want to make sure that students know is that you can change your plan within the, the first couple weeks of class. So if you get to campus and realize in this example, they're asking the, the 10 or the 14, maybe you start with the 14 and realize that you're having four extra meals um, each of those weeks and then um, could change uh, to the 10 meal a week plan um, from there. But the 14 is definitely kind of, I guess, the middle of the road um, of those three options. And uh, could adjust from there um, in those first uh, couple weeks. Also, do you preload your JAX card or do charges just go on your account? So the the JAX debit express, that, that money, so to do laundry um, and things like that, that is something that you would need to uh, preload uh, money onto your card um, for that. It's not a direct bill to your student account or anything along those lines. And um, you can do that online. You can add that. And we also have some stations on campus to be able to um, add that as well. Um, and kind of one last thought as we're kind of up on up on time here around Jack's cards, which is where, where you're going to use for those meal plans. Um, and also uh, would be putting those, uh, those the, the money on there for laundry and those types of things and entry to the residence halls. You're going to use it uh, for a lot of uh, different things. Uh, with that, your student needs to submit a picture um, and it should be a, a good picture of them, just like it would be for a government ID, a, a passport, a driver's license. Um, we're not looking for, for silly poses or anything like that. NAU.edu slash JAX card is where they're gonna submit their photo for their uh, JAX card student ID. And then uh, the plan is that during move-in, um, at the residence halls, we'll distribute those JAX cards to students. And obviously if students are living off campus, uh, we'll come up with a way for those students to get uh, their JAX cards um, as well. Um, well, I think we're, we're at time here and the, the questions are seeming to slow down. So I think we've gotten a lot of the, the high level ones, uh, but really appreciate these. This helps inform us know what questions uh, top of mind for families. And as Annika mentioned earlier too, we're gonna to be doing that forecast from Flagstaff show. Um, and these types of questions uh, really help inform us on what content we should be sharing uh, throughout the summer. And for those of you joining us uh, later after we talked about that, forecast from Flagstaff is gonna be an online video series. The very first one is gonna to debut tonight um, at 5 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, it will be recorded for you to watch afterwards as well. And then every two weeks throughout the summer, uh, you'll have the opportunity um, to hear the, the latest things. And um, as Annika alluded to, on the 17th, uh, we're going to be bringing in uh, Housing Residence Life Office to be, because we know there's a lot of questions around that, and we want to be um, addressing those um, as best as possible. So uh, thanks so much for your time today, and we look forward to uh, continuing to uh, connect